Welcome to Real Money Talks, how to make money, manage money, and invest money. Your Real Money Talks host, Laurel Langmire, gets straight to the point about what it actually takes to make money and build lasting wealth in today's changing economic climate. If you're ready to get the financial results you've always dreamed of, keep listening. Real Money Talks is the right place for you. And now here's your host, Laurel Langmire. Welcome back to Laurel's Real Money Talks. We're here with Steve Lemus. So Steve has graduated from our group. He uh, came to work with me right out of the uh, University of uh, Reno, Nevada, and was in graphics and journalism, and has been on the team for years and years, and has become quite the expert. He leads our FastCast coaching calls, and he's with us today to talk about AV basics. When you are at an event, what are the steps that you have to do? And when you're in a crisis, what are your workarounds? So Steve, Welcome. Thank you, Laurel, for having me on your podcast. Uh, I appreciate this so much. And just to give you a little bit more background, uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Steve Lemos. I've been working with Laurel and Live Out Loud for about five years now, so it's, it's been a, a really fun run. Uh, I've been out to all the events, uh, the preview events, uh, the, the you know three days to cash events that are now the off off Wall Street assets events, and you know some outside stages. Traveled all over. Um, and it's it's been a privilege to to work and, and, and do these events. I've learned so much from Laurel, so thank you once more for doing that. Uh, now let's get into the podcast. So today I kind of want to go over uh, some audiovisual basics with you, and I want to break it up into pretty much uh, three different parts. So the first part is you know knowing what to have, you know what equipment to use, um, and I'll go through you know uh, some brands that we use, um, you know different types of microphones. And uh, I'll touch on, you know, PA speakers. Um, I'll touch on, you know, using hotel sound versus bringing in your own stuff. Um, the second part I want to cover is getting to know the layout or just pretty much, you know, the lay of the land. Um, you know, when you're going into a venue, whether it be a hotel, whether it be a meeting room, you know, chamber, a restaurant even, you know, it, it doesn't matter where you're going, just knowing knowing what to have, knowing the ha knowing what equipment you need to use and um, being able to um, decide if you need power or not. And then the third part of, of audiovisual basics is essentially reading the room, you know, um, getting to interact with the people, you know, getting into choosing the right kind of music for the ambience, um, getting to, you know, definitely watching the speaker and um, managing the mixer, managing the soundboard, and uh, just overall, you know, becoming the orchestrator of the room, you know, as be, you know, being the audio visual person, uh, you may sublim subliminally think that there's not a lot of art to it, but you really have to sort of keep everything on task, you know, make sure that the speaker's microphone is working, making sure that the audio levels are good, making sure you're not getting any sort of pops, um, you know, static and things of that nature in the microphone. So with that being said, let's get into the, let's get into part one and that's uh, equipment. So what type of equipment um, should you look for? Um, you know, where to buy that kind of a thing. Um, I'll start off uh, with probably one of the simplest layouts, which would be our preview events. And these are our one day events where typically, um, you know, we would either get a hotel venue, um, it would be some sort of a meeting room. Uh, sometimes it'll be like a, a larger boardroom, or in some cases, it could be a restaurant. You know, they have those meeting rooms and things like that. Um, what I do almost you know 99 percent of the time unless um unless the information is provided to me um first thing is just call the venue see what they have see what they offer and see if it costs extra to get it most of the time what will happen is if you end up booking the venue if it's a restaurant if it's a hotel if it's a meeting room or something like that depending on the amount of people that you're going to have there um, they're going to let you use the stuff because they're either getting something out of it right you're ordering food for the restaurant so there's a bunch of people you know the bill's going to be big and they're going to be fine with it um, you're paying for the hotel that kind of thing uh, in some instances it's going to be completely separate so for example if you're going to book with a hotel um, most likely you're going to work with PSAV, which is an outside audiovisual company that most hotels contract with. Um, you know, met a lot of great people through PSAV. 
They're very helpful 24 seven round the clock. So um, definitely great guys. Uh, not always the cheapest, but definitely great to have. In terms of the equipment that you want to have, just basic stuff on hand for anything at all. Um, you want a good handheld microphone. Uh, you also want a good lapel microphone. And uh, you know, with a lapel microphone, you could also go over the ear, um, but those are the two general microphones you wanna have. You wanna have a handheld microphone, you wanna have a lapel microphone. And you wanna have a mixer, you know, a travel mixer or something small. Um, obviously, if you have something a little bit bigger, by all means, you know, whatever, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever you feel more comfortable with, definitely go with that. So you want a handheld microphone, you want a lapel microphone, you want a good mixer, uh, you want a couple of XLR cables, you know, to actually run back everything up. You know, you want to have a, a power strip because no matter where you're going to be, you're going to be plugging in multiple items. So you definitely want to have, have that on hand as well. <clears throat> now here's um, the kind of part B to that side of it is most hotels, most venues will have some sort of a sound port for you to plug into. So if you go to the hotels, you know, they're going to have some sort of a panel for you to just plug in your mixer, uh, you know, XLR cable style, or it might be like an auxiliary import, like a headphone jack that you have to, you know, plug into. Um, so you can use the house, the sound, the sound system of the house. Um, 80% of the time, the house system is actually really good audio, um, so you really don't have to worry about anything there. But I'll tell you, you know, that 10% of the time that the house sound really sucks, it's really gonna mess, you know, mess with your vibe. So I always call ahead first and just say, hey, what's your experience with groups in there? Have they complained about the sound? Just be transparent with them, you know, you're talking to people. So um, have your microphone, the handheld microphone, have the lapel over the ear, um, have um, the mixer, um, you know, have a power strip for your mixer. And then if the house sound isn't available, obviously you can rent. Um, but, you know, you might have to consider getting some PA speakers um, with stands, you know, so put those in the front of the room. In terms of cabling and what to get and brands and things like that, um, I personally like to use the, the Shure brand, S-H-U-R-E, uh, just because they're reliable. I've been using them for over five years, um, never had any problems at all with it. Um, and um, the cool thing about Sure products and Sure microphones is that they have a frequency finder depending on where you are in the area. So you can literally put in the address, it'll tell you what frequencies you need to go on to so you don't have any disturbances um, in, your, uh, in your reception. Uh, the only thing, uh, the only downside to that is if you're traveling outside of the country, in Canada, obviously it, it won't work over there, you're just gonna have to kind of wing it with the frequencies and the bands. Uh, but if you're in the US, all you have to do is, uh, you know, Google, for the Sure Frequency Finder. Um, it'll pull up a page, you put in your address, you put in what type of unit you're using, uh, which, you know, for smaller events is probably like a BLX unit. Um, again, you know, this is audio visual basics, uh, not a, not a, you know, we're not doing a full blown concert here and we're not doing, you know, a crowd over a hundred people, 150 people in the room. So, um, Sure, in terms of microphones, I, I love it personally, me personally, that's my personal preference, my, you know, my personal opinion, so um, I definitely recommend that. In terms of having PA speakers and things like that, um, Mackie is definitely a great system to use. Um, we recently got some 12 inch thumpers and you know, two, two 12 inch thumpers with stands and those things are just, they're, they're sturdy. Um, they'll travel, you can check them in as luggage at the airport, um, you can ship them, you know, they're gonna take that beating um, and then they're gonna perform very well. In terms of the mixer, same thing goes for the mixer. A Mackie mixer is definitely really good to have. Um, uh, we have a couple actually, we have like a, you know, a smaller um, eight channel mixer that we travel with, fits in a backpack. And then we have a larger one, which is more of a, you know, 12, uh, I think it's a 12 channel, it might be a 14 channel mixer, which, which we use for our bigger events. Uh, we can get into that later, but for the purpose of this podcast, I really want to stick to the audio visual basics. So just to recap on part one, uh, you definitely want to have a good handheld mic. You want to have a good lapel or over the ear microphone. Uh, you definitely want to have a mixer, power strip to go with your mixer. Um, and then, you know, again, check with the hotel or your venue and see if they have uh, a good sound system over uh, over um, um, the speakers in the roof. Otherwise, you're going to have to look into some PA speakers and things like that. One of the other things, too, that a lot of people really struggle with um, is, let's say, for example, you're doing a PowerPoint, a PowerPoint presentation, a keynote presentation, and the laptop requires audio. You have videos on there. You have music that you want to play. Um, you need to be able to run 
a cable from your mixer to your laptop in order to fulfill that audio. So what I've found works the best is obviously doing a, a you know 100 foot XLR cable that gives you a little bit more flexibility to be kind of in the back of the room and you know have the link to run to the front of the room and w with the laptop. Some people prefer to have the laptop in the back of the room. It's just preference, whatever you think is best. You know, a lot of people like to put the microphones up in front of the room so they don't get a lot of static. But like I said, with that Sure Frequency Finder, I've had no problems at all. And again, you know, we're dealing with rooms here that are 100 people or less, 150 people or less. So you're not going to have a lot of a lot of problems with frequency disruption and things like that. Um, then what you do is you get a little um, a little uh, XLR to mini jack adapter that is pretty much your, your laptop hatch um, for the sound for the videos that'll go to the laptop. And you're able to manage it from your mixer from the back of the room. So part one, you know, that's in terms of equipment, what to use, what's good, what to have on handy. Um, yeah, I, um, I could also go into wireless um, mixers and wireless, you know, um, ideas and things like that which is actually becoming very popular so if you if you visit newer hotels a lot of the newer hotels have everything that's wireless usually controlled by a tablet i mean the screen they have will come down with the tablet the actual uh inputs that they have for the audio system will be auxiliary um, opposed to the xlr so the xlr cable is that three prong cable um, auxiliary is just your normal headphone jack and for example this hotel we just did an event at um you know um we came in and their panel was uh, a headphone jack input, um, the auxiliary input. So I had to kind of get creative, um, get a, a cable um, that was able to um, go from my mixer out into their auxiliary panel. Um, and then I was able to take advantage of their sound system. So I hope that was helpful for part one. And uh, let's get into part two, which is, um, I believe I said it was getting into um, sort of the lay of the land, um, getting to know, um, your venue and what you're going to need for that venue so that you know you have the right equipment. Um, and this can be done easily. I mean, it's just picking up the phone and calling, uh, calling the person, um, calling the salesperson or, you know, just, uh, I've even taken it as far as, um, calling somebody, uh, for example, if it was at a restaurant, um, I called the restaurant and I had the hostess, you know, go into the room where we were going to do the meeting and just take snapshots of the room so I could visually see what it was like. Um, I asked her to actually go and figure out where the, um, you know, outlets were. So if I needed to plug in in a, in a certain area of the room, I knew where that was. Um, I asked if there was anything that was provided, any audio visual or anything like that. Um, that way I know you know, coming into this thing, exactly what needs to happen, what equipment I need to bring, and, um, you know, how to have a, a successful event. So that's probably one of the easiest things, you know, getting 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 um, in touch with your hotel staff, getting in touch with people that, you know, that you can't, um, that sell you the venue and things like that. Um, your biggest asset on the ground is going to be the people that are working behind the scenes in the hotels, you know, in the restaurants, the waiters, the bartenders, um, you know, uh, the, essentially the hospitality staff, you know, tip them and, you know, make friends with them because they're going to make your life a whole lot easier. Um, they're going to get you things when you need them. Um, they're going to work with you. They might even let you just borrow things without, you know, charging you for them. So things of that nature. So that kind of second, second part, um, pretty straightforward. And then, uh, part three is sort of orchestrating the room and, and, and what to watch for and what to look for. So normally when I come into a room, um, if it's a hotel venue, I'll just get, I'll just kind of go off the scenario that we do for one of our preview events. So we go into the, we, we book a hotel, we go into the hotel. I call the hotel and I figure out what we need. I have all my equipment on hand. Um, I set up a, a small AV table, you know, kind of back of the room. Um, you know, PA speakers are up, mixers in, everything's ready to go. We already did a sound check and, you know, we're ready to roll. So I have a, you know, a music playlist on Spotify, um, which, you know, if you're doing events, you do need to get a license um, to play the music. So definitely look into, you know, event um, music licenses and things like that. So you are able to play the music and not get in any trouble. Um, Usually the speaker will have some sort of like an intro song. So you definitely want to have that ready. Um, so that way when they're walking up to the stage or walking up to the front of the room, you play that music. Um, and it's more, you know, doing auto visual is, um, you, could, you could have it timelined out, but it's really more a feel of the room. You know, if people are getting up and they're clapping, you know, just envision what that music would look like. And, and you know, use your best judgment with what song to pay, what song to play. 
you're going to have, uh, you know, most popular um, event songs are, you know, more, more, uh, you know, pop songs, you know, popular songs. Um, you know, I play a lot of Justin Timberlake, you know, I, I um, you know, just really, you know, really poppy songs. And um, keep an eye on the room, keep, you know, feel the room, watch the speaker as they're kind of walking back and forth uh, from the stage, interacting with the audience. Um, if you do have that extra handheld on hand, you know, if the, if the speaker is interacting with the audience, you know, the audience member needs a microphone, go run and grab it to them. Um, if you're using PA speakers, you know, watch when the speaker walks in front of the speaker so that way you don't get any feedback. Be ready to mute out. Be ready to turn the level down. Be ready to turn the gain down. Um, and, you know, just pay attention through the meeting. You know, I, I, there's been so many occasions where I've hired outside audiovisual companies and it's they're just kind of a plug and play model. Um, they're like, all right, we turn the sound on and that's pretty much all we do. You really have to kind of immerse yourself in the environment and just really, really get in tune and sync with it. So, um, all right, cool. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed that sort of like a, you know, that short kind of, um, um, you know, vision into uh, the audiovisual world. Uh, definitely a basics um, basics podcast. But uh, once again, uh, thank you very much, Laura, for having me on. And uh, if you have any questions at all, you know, feel free to just, you know, um, reach out to um, the podcast page. And uh, I look forward to doing some more of these in the future. So thanks again very much. Appreciate it. So Steve, it's been great to have you with us. We appreciate it. We're going to have you back on more and more podcasts as you continue to develop more and more content for helping Live Out Loud run, not only in our podcasts, but in our events, our three days to cash, our previews and outside stages. We appreciate it. Again, you're listening to Laurel's Real Money Talks, where we teach you how to make, keep and invest money. Depending on what the topics are, always go to asklaurel.com, put in your name, phone number and email. And uh, make sure you spell Laurel right, ask L-O-R-A-L dot com. And we'll be right back with you. Have a great day. Thank you for joining Laurel for this segment of Real Money Talks, how to make money, manage money, and invest money. To continue this new conversation and to find free resources to support your wealth creation, visit asklaurel.com forward slash podcast gifts. That's A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L dot com forward slash podcast gifts. Thanks for listening and join us again soon. New episodes are released every week.